All right, so our next video on home automation, I have really struggled and obsessed with. It's not easy, but, and this is not a perfect answer, but I think I'm gonna tell you the solution, the key to home automation sanity is to start with a good alarm system, or at least a reasonably okay alarm system. We've got a DSC system here. We're gonna talk about DSC and Honeywell. There are some other options, but if there is anybody in the audience that has a lot of experience with a good system, you're probably not gonna have, I mean, these are the big systems, like they're really big systems, so they're really well supported. But uh, yeah, home alarm system as basis of your home automation system, let's dive in. All right, so first up, what's the anatomy of a general you know, a uh, home automation system. And I've got, I've got kind of a, not a Raspberry Pi, but I've got kind of a test system here that I can, I can sort of show you. And the first is the alarm panel itself. So usually when you get one of these things installed professionally, or, you know, if you uh, are getting grifted by uh, ADT or uh, Vivint, um, they'll come to your house and install a panel like this, which they don't pay very much for at all. And then you're into a subscription type thing and you know it's basically running off of this this is the computer this is the panel but this system has a lot of good engineering in it this is designed for five nines of uptime this is designed for lightning immunity this is this is designed with decades going back to the 1980s uh worth of learning and awesomeness and it's from uh you know the digital security corporation dsc uh or honeywell um and so this panel has sensor inputs programmable outputs, uh, an interface for the alarm, bell, siren thing, like this is an indoor one, but usually you would have an indoor one and maybe an outdoor one as well. An interface for a phone line, good old analog phone lines, yeah, that's what they were designed for, but there are upgrade modules to provide connectivity for notifying of an alarm over the internet, over GSM, cellular, LTE. Actually, the GSM stuff's all discontinued. Everything's LTE now. And it's actually less expensive for them to do that anyway. So all of that plugs into this. This is a standard bus interface. There's also standard interfaces. Like here, I've got a motion sensor. And yeah, I know you can build one out of Raspberry Pi Zero, but why would you when you can buy these for like 10 to $15 each retail, like seven bucks wholesale. And this has jumpers on the inside. You can say, how big of a pet do you have? And what is the operational range that you want this thing to, to work for? The wireless ones even have, how quick do you want it to respond? Because um, the wireless ones uh, don't transmit very much, like once every 30 seconds or once every 10 or 15 seconds. And so when it sees motion, it doesn't notify the panel necessarily immediately, or it doesn't look for motion necessarily immediately to save power on the battery. That's how you get those seven year battery life times, but you can change that via jumper as well. This is an 1832. DSC 1832, it means uh, 18 is uh, the newer generation of DSC and then 32, 32 zones. DSC also about five years ago came out with something they called Neo. We'll talk about that, but you wanna avoid the Neo system for right now, we're just talking general architecture. There's a four pin interface, um, it's called a bus. So like there's a bus or keypad interface and so like this is a keypad and this is actually the RFK 5500 which goes with the DSC panel but they're different keypads go with different panels sometimes this bus is encrypted sometimes it is not encrypted in our case for these systems these are not encrypted this system was originally designed about 15 years ago and they're still in production the DSC series uh, but a lot of the stuff that you see online goes back three or four years and that was part of why I was having trouble with this I mean this panel dates from 2012 I mean it's almost 10 years old already and that was part of why I was struggling with this because we're moving backwards in technology and it's not like oh we're making things out of plastic because it's cheaper and we can't make toys out of cast iron anymore type of moving backwards no these companies are grifting people we're settling into what I see is unethical business models. And that's what I'm talking about with the DSC Neo. So the DSC Neo doesn't allow any third party integrations. They wanna control it all. DSC is kind of a juggernaut in the industry that they're in. And I hope that this decision ultimately leads to the collapse of their company. So why am I recommending 
the products. Well, the older products, the Power Series, they're open. This bus is not encrypted, and as a result of that, there's been a proliferation of peripherals that can work with this. Of course, you're only as secure as your unencrypted bus, so make sure those wires are in safe places and in conduit and things like that. But we have things like this interface board. This is the, the Invisalink. This is only about $100, and it's only about $5 worth of components. And this provides an Ethernet interface to that bus. Now to be sure, the security on this is tissue thin. So you still wanna take some precautions to make sure that uh, this thing is adequately protected. But if it does have an internet connection, it'll phone home to the Invisalink people uh, in a not terrible kind of a way. And you can have alarm monitoring over the internet through this thing for on the order of $5 a month. Is there an ADT plan that's $5 a month? No, I didn't think so. That's because you're being grifted. They're not providing a valuable service. Well, I mean, I suppose, you know, it's worth what the market will bear, but there's all sorts of roadblocks and, and anti-competitive things to prevent you from, you know, having a competing company or, or, or moving, uh, you know, to a cheaper service that's like $5 a month. And, and I would, you know, they tell me that the whole capitalism thing is like competition and locking your system in and that's not, that's sort of anti-competition. So I think what will happen is some really amazing company in Taiwan. Yes, I'm looking at you. Hey, I've got money, you want a partner? Maybe we could do the level one alarm system. Architecturally, this old DSC system has a lot of hard won knowledge. There's a lot of really amazing things generally about the architecture of how it works, how it works with sensors. I mean, we talk about door sensors and motion sensors. I've also got a smoke alarm. You can wire in the smoke alarm, and if the smoke alarm goes off, I mean, it still beeps, it has a speaker, it's gonna make noise, just like, just like everything. Uh, but it's also in the alarm panel, so the alarm panel knows. You didn't have to figure that out. You didn't have to do that for your home home automation system. Um, but, you know, if anybody wants to partner in Taiwan, or if there's something other than DSC that has the same sort of open philosophy, but is as well engineered, or close to it, or if we have to do it ourselves, we will do it ourselves. This vendor lock-in stuff for stuff like this, that is just, it, it's like getting vendor lock-in for light switches and your home breaker panel. It's like, I'm sorry, you know, DSC, this is good engineering, but that doesn't mean that you can design the DSC Neo system, which literally locks out third parties like Invisalink. That is, that's worthy of, I mean, that's just, there's such a powerful entity, it seems like that would be an antitrust investigation. It's just so, so frustrating. But I digress. Uh, Wireless sensors is also an option, although it's pretty easy to um, do bad things uh, with your wireless sensors. Like you could you could blind the alarm system by making it hard to communicate with all of the wireless sensors. It's also pretty easy to fake. Ryan already did a video on the sensors and building your own interface. And so some of the experimentation that he was doing was basically like doing away with all this. Can't really stomach the fact that, you know, DSC is involved. Maybe we can just buy the sensors and use sensors from whatever. And in his case, it was a mix of Honeywell and DSC sensors, which are not, you know, those those are not compatible even though they're they're not as necessarily as locked down. It just depends depends on what you're what you're doing. Um, and that is an option. You can do that. But nothing works so far in, in the stuff that I've tested anyway, uh, as reliably and cleanly as these older DSC panels. And these are still made, to be sure, because a lot of commercial customers and corporate customers are not buying the DSC Neo crap. So this is why I think this type of a system is uh, key for uh, your home automation system is because you can do sensors. So, for example, when I walk in my kitchen, I have under cabinet LED lighting, but you know, LEDs don't last forever 30, 40,000 hours, something like that. Can't leave them on 24 7, they'll, they'll be worn out in a couple of years. So, what I've done is the alarm sensor for the kitchen, because you can get into the kitchen from the porch, you know, if you were going to break a window or whatever, uh, when it sees motion, it's connected to my local network. And I have Home Assistant monitoring this. This is in Invisalink. And it will notify the system of motion. If you add a battery like this to your panel, which is what they're designed for, then this system can run for something like a day when you've got this kind of a battery connected to it. So all of this stuff is really awesome when it comes to sensors and data input. In terms of appliance control, I wanna play music, I wanna control electrical outlets. No, it doesn't do any of that. But if you can integrate this system with something like Home Assistant, then you're off to the races in terms of home automation. So this is the basis. This is what we're talking about. And there's a write-up on the level one forums. 
Uh, if there is already a company in Taiwan that's making really amazing open alarm systems that are this reliable and easy to program, let me know because I'll probably get it in and try it and see how it goes. You can get the wireless, like an RFK keypad, and then this becomes a wireless receiver for wireless sensors. This base panel, well, you know, like I say, has eight inputs, and you can wire more than one sensor to an eight uh, to an input. So, like, you know, if your if your uh, you know your entryway has like a door and a window and you want zone one to be your entryway, you can wire up your door and your sensor and everything together on just zone one. That's totally okay. Wireless zones work a little differently. It's just one device per wireless zones. But with the, you know, the, this is the 1832, just get the 1864. It's not, it's like a few bucks more. And that'll support 64 zones in total. Ever how many hardwired zones and then ever how many wireless zones. Usually I recommend starting your wireless zones at 17 that way you can have the eight wired zones that are built in. You can add another expansion thing that will give you another eight wired zones. So you can have eight sets of wires for the really important stuff and then anything else that you don't care about. Like if you have a motion sensor like in your bathroom, but nobody's going to break in through the bathroom, uh, but you want to monitor that for turning off your water, nah, just use a wireless sensor. It's fine. I mean, if somebody's jamming your wireless sensor and there's motion in the bathroom, that's not... It's not really going to be a, a big deal. Whereas, you know, if they jam the sensor for like an entry door, that might be a, a bigger deal. Although this panel does have the ability to detect a wireless jam and may, depending on how you program it, you can set off the alarm anyway, which is pretty cool stuff. This has been a quick look at why I think DSC and possibly Honeywell, there's a Honeywell Vista system. It's got some rough edges. I have an older, an even older Honeywell system. That's what I use right now. I'll probably switch over to a DSC system or maybe a hybrid system. Maybe I'll have some things with DSC sensors and some things with, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. But I wanted to give you a quick introduction to DSC and why I've been struggling to recommend something as the base. Like I had it said in my head that home alarm as the foundation for your home automation because of the sensors and you know not just door and window sensors, smoke alarms and, and water sensors and just all kinds of stuff. Um, makes sense as a base but then we got a layer on z-wave we got a la layer on appliance control we got a layer on all this stuff now another thing that you should look for in anything that you buy is is it going to be useless a, a brick a paperweight in just a couple of years time and time again iot devices when the manufacturer gets tired of supporting it it becomes a brick it becomes a paperweight so this dsc system look really carefully at this layout we've got our you know, wire bus or message bus. And then we've got our Invisilink module. And this is actually an old Invisilink module. They make new ones and the new ones look a little different, but it's still the same four pin bus. If we look at the screw terminals that are on our alarm panel itself, we have sensor inputs, which there's a lot of clever stuff here. Like it has resistors to know if somebody cuts the wire or shorts the wire, if the resistance of the wire changes any at all. So it's not just a matter of open and close. It's actually a lot smarter than that, but you know, this panel layout is, is basically the same. This, this was manufactured a few years ago, but check this out. Here's an alternative alarm panel, also from DSC. And this one was manufactured in 2003. So this is basically 20 years old, this panel. I mean, not quite, but well, yeah, actually it is because this design, this design is more than 20 years old. But if you look at this, it is basically an identical screw terminal layout. And guess what? All the sensors and everything that you deployed with this system is forward compatible with this newer system. So if somebody comes out with something that is even from a different brand, then this stuff would be compatible because there isn't encryption. There isn't really anything that DSC has done to lock it down because it's physically hardwired. I feel like it's mostly okay that there's no encryption but it is possible to use wireless sensors with this and you should definitely check out ryan's video on that because you can see all of the information from the sensors but if your neighbors or somebody you know in an unmarked van across the street can monitor your sensors how big of a deal is that it doesn't mean that they're going to have wireless access to your network it doesn't mean that you know your devices can become a gateway to the rest of the network this set of screw terminals is mostly compatible there are some older devices that you run into you do run into problems some of these older keypads you wouldn't want to use because some of these older keypads are just zone one zone two zone three you literally have no control over it i love renaming the zones to be like this is the kitchen this is the crawl space this is the garage this is the the panic room this is you know whatever Although you don't really need an alarm in the panic room, but uh, <laughs> bathroom number one, bathroom number two. <laughs> So-and-so is using too much hot water. Just turn the water off. 
It's really fun. Sometimes when you're doing research on this, like you were going to eBay and you're like, all right, just fix me up with a kit. You're gonna need a transformer and some other stuff that I haven't even talked about in this video. So come to the forums before you do that and get yourself educated a little bit. Sometimes you might see dual path. We, we got a dual path. This is a, a GSM interface. <laughs> GSM's not really a thing anymore. You need an LTE interface. So this is also another piece of equipment that's retired. It also has its own separate battery backup and a cover and a SIM card. This is basically a cell phone, but it interfaces the message bus just like everything else. And this provides a secondary path or a primary path for your alarm, depending on, you can have a hardwired telephone alarm plus wireless alarm, or you can have an internet alarm plus a GSM or LTE alarm, or this can be your primary and the backup can be the internet. It just depends on what your alarm monitoring service that you're going with uh, does and you know, whatever you decide. I mean, Invisilink is the cheap one, but you know, if your internet's out, it's not gonna be able to call the police or call the fire department or anything like that because you pay a service to do that and a service says, hey, yeah, you know, we got some alarms and then we pulled up the security cameras if you like to give them security camera access. And you know, we see all this bad stuff, but the Invisalink, the cheap ones, they don't they do not do that. Even ADT doesn't, doesn't do that. They'll just call you and be like, hey, your alarm's going off, is it legit? Yep, it's like, okay, well, we'll call the police and let them know. So, uh, you know, your mileage may vary on the alarm part of it. But in terms of a basis for automation, Look at all this stuff that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. And it has stability from 2003 until now, from 2010 until now, from 2020 until the future. This, this will never be a brick. Even if uh, you know your alarm monitoring service company changes, not a big deal, pick a different one. All right, once you've got your alarm system set up, you've got your door sensors on, you've got your uh, you know smoke detector, you've got your brake glass sensor, all the sensors that you wanna use with your alarm system, it's a perfectly functional standalone alarm system. The Invisalink module will let Home Assistant see it. And we've got a lot more to talk about with Home Assistant or any other integration that you might do. It doesn't have to be Home Assistant. There's libraries for Python. You can roll your own with a Python application, no problem, and be up and running with it, you know, if you want to do that yourself. But home automation and sensors, it's like when there's motion, turn on the lights, you can totally do that. And that motion sensor behind me there, look at that. It's crazy. So the home alarm can be a good home alarm and it's not, it doesn't suffer from like Google getting their claws in it and making it a terrible thing that is obsolete eventually. But you can also set up your own automation. Like don't bother turning the lights on if it's light outside or uh, turn the lights on and then turn the other lights on or you know, if the alarm is going off, turn the lights on and off rapidly. A lot of fun things you can do with that. But that's getting more into the home assistant side of it than the home alarm system. And be sure to check out the forum for the, the guide on setting up your DSC. I mean, there's a lot of guides on the internet for setting up this kind of alarm. I don't think I need to rehash that, but I can at least get your point the right way. Home assistant, you know, it goes closed source tomorrow. Okay, open HAP, use something else. It's all open, it'll be supported forever. And this is great because I feel like that, uh, you know, when people get it together, we're going to have fully open stuff. And the home assistant people are doing that. They got some pretty killer looking hardware. They may be the ones to take over this, but we need something this low level and this reliable and this hardwired. I think that's gonna have to be it for this video. This is the uh, DSC 1864 kit. Um, and we can get into the nitty gritty of how to set this up specifically in the next video. Or let me know what you're looking for, or if you picked up one of these, let me know what problems you ran into. But I'm gonna show you how to, how to set it up. What do I know? I'm Wendell, this is level one, I'm signing out, and I'll see you later.